Okay, so today I want to do something a little bit different, a bit more creative, I guess. Um, this is going to be going over my kind of top favourite uh, puzzle sections in Resident Evil games. There's three, I believe, I've picked. Um, this is not just like a small puzzle part where it's like pushing the thing to open the thing. This is more, this is a point where you have to figure this out, else you cannot continue. Um, more of a forced thing rather than a you could do this to get an extra item to get a new thing. Like, no, this is things that you actually have to do. Um, so three. There is obviously other ones, but these are the three that kind of stick in my mind when I think about them. So without any further ado, let's jump into my three favourite puzzle sections in Resident Evil games. Okay, so first up is going to be Bedroom from Resident Evil 7. This is part of the banned footage DLCs for Resident Evil 7 that follow Clancy as you figure out what happened to him and how we ended up kind of dying. Um, well, what he went through before dying in the Baker house. Um, this is a very puzzle focused DLC and essentially you're tasked with getting out of the bedroom. Sounds easy, right? Well, that's the issue. It's not. There is a lot of puzzles in this room. And they're all kind of general, kind of find the item that goes with this item to break this thing and put things in a certain order to open the thing. It's all generic kind of puzzles you'd see in the Resident Evil game, but the best part about this is at certain points throughout this, um, you make a noise, a loud noise, and it alerts Marguerite, and you have to basically get back into the bed before she comes up. But the thing is, you have to put everything back where it was perfectly how she notices and you take damage and I think if you fail three times she kills you so not only do you have all the puzzles to worry about and figure out but and again this is more of a first time through experience without a guide I did this way back when it came out without a guide and it took me ages um, but the first experience you kind of go out with this you figure something out and you're like yes okay I've done this now and then you don't know that that's a thing, and you'll fail. And then you realise, okay, I had to put everything back where it was. And then you forget where things were. And then when you do figure out where things are, you get back in and you kind of get past the damage caution part of the, the DLC. And you get back out of the bed to carry on. You just forget where you, where you were and what things did. And it, it's such a... It has a whole layer of, oh shit, <laughs> I've got to remember this or else I'm going to die. And it's so cool. It's quite long as well, like, even if you speed run it, I think it's like 10 minutes. Uh, so it's a lot to figure out, there's a lot of different things you can do. And it's just so fun, man. It's so fun. Um, I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil 7. I think the DLCs for the game, which I've gone over you know, in depth, separately in videos, I'll leave a link in the description for those videos. But um, I think Resident Evil 7, base game, Resident Evil 7, all of the DLC is just incredible. And this is really memorable. Like if you have an experienced bedroom already, definitely get the van footage DLC and check it out because you will not be disappointed. Next up is the chest chess plug pieces from the Resident Evil 2 remake. This is more of a whole area enjoyment rather than just a puzzle. Um, and it's the sewer section, which is ironic uh, in Resident Evil 2. Sewer sections usually aren't the best thing ever, but this one... I quite like, I quite enjoyed it, um, and essentially what you're tasked with doing is throughout the sewer there is these three missing chess piece plug-in things which essentially power a door and you have to find them, which is natural through exploration in the area you'll find them just from looking and then when you find them there is a, like a very riddle sounding um, note on the wall which essentially tells you where to put them without telling you where to put them and you have to figure out you know what they are or which one's which obviously if you're a chess person you'll know but you can just inspect it and it'll tell you which one it is um it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun uh, this one really stumped me <laughs> the first time through um puzzles in resident Evil sometimes do throw me for a loop but um i'm kind of used to used to doing them now and what they usually end up making you do but this one is very very interesting i really like it i do think the old style of puzzles in the older resident evil games and i am kind of counting the two remake for the example is you know they're, they're all a lot more involved obviously there's moments in the newer games for example the bedroom dlc is one of those moments but 
they don't really do it as often. Like if you look at let's go for village, the puzzles in that game are kind of bad. Like they're not really difficult. You know what I mean? Like the Donner area is good. It's not really a puzzle. It's more of a look for things. <laughs> but um, the older games definitely have the better puzzles and the more difficult ones as well. This is just fun. It encourages exploration of the area. You basically have to go everywhere in the sewers almost to get them all. Um, I think there's two in this electrical room and then there's one like near the top where you get back to the police station. So you do have to technically go everywhere to find these things and you are rewarded if you do, you do get a weapon. Uh, I think for Claire it's the taser gun and for Leon it's the flame thrower. Maybe, I don't think. No, I think it is. I think it's the flame thrower. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so it's worth exploring, of course, but finding these things and then going back and putting them together is it's a fun. It's a lot of fun to do. I think what adds another layer to this as well, and this isn't really part of the puzzle, but this is part of how the game works, is these old games and obviously seven as well have a limited inventory. So obviously there's three things to find and obviously you're carrying weapons and healing and ammo. You have to juggle everything. Like to complete this, you have to kind of make sure you have space to get them all back, um, find them all obviously, and then obviously complete the puzzle itself, which again, it's more of a, again with the puzzles in this game and with any kind of Resident Evil game, especially if you play it like consistently. The first time is always the time you have to think about it. I think it does change slightly in over its different in Claire and Leon's campaigns or it's different in the second run of each so it does throw you off when you go through the second scenarios but once you figured it out it's right there but figuring it out and just getting it right is so satisfying and last but certainly not least this is just I had to put this one in there this is incredible this is the happy birthday videotape from Resident Evil 7 this is again one of those puzzles that just blew my mind when I first did it and again it took me a while to figure out what I was doing wrong <laughs> at first um, but what you are tasked with in this is you are locked in a room with no weapons because Lucas asked you to take your weapons out of your inventory before you go in and you are essentially tasked with putting that candle on a birthday cake easy enough right obviously not there's complications. You have to get it in there without it being put out by the water that's above the doorway. And initially, you play this through as Clancy, and this is you watching the videotape as Ethan. So you figure it out as Clancy, and then obviously he does something that you're not supposed to do. And then you have to go to that part of the game later on and remember what he did. But, remember, but also remember what he did wrong and do it as Ethan properly. There's a lot of figuring out in this one. Uh, there's certain codes you need. You need to do things in certain order. You need to find certain things by looking through items. And it's very convoluted at times. Um, again, this is for the first time through. You, it is essentially a Resident Evil puzzle, but there's a lot more going on with it. And of course, you know, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. You can kind of basically cheat it if you've done it already. You can kind of, you know the codes for the combination locks. You can do it in minutes, but doing it first time through and figuring out what's what and where things are and what not to do to actually beat it properly. It, it's a nice experience to do. And honestly, the tone of the puzzle and everything about it is just so good. And I, I always quote that cake in real life to people quite often <laughs> it really sticks in your mind things like this it just this is one of those things I'll always remember from Resident Evil like I'm unbiased well maybe a little bit but 7 is just incredible I said it earlier in the video but 7 is just so well done it's so good and things like this are the reasons why you know it's got that old school feel the puzzles are actually quite convoluted especially this one there is other poor portions of 7 that do require you to do some of the things you would do in the original games, for example the very beginning of the game where you have to find the, the dog head things for the doll that kind of reminds me of a lot of the medallion stuff from Resident Evil 2 
uh, remake at least. And then this as well, this whole portion. It's just so good to do, and it's so... Things like this, figuring out things like this in Resident Evil, and there's more that I could talk about in kind of other games. It's just so satisfying to figure out the first time through, because... It makes you feel smart. <laughs> like, it's not like rocket science, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but... You do have to look at things from different perspectives, or... Do things in different orders to kind of get something to progress and then you can get to the next part and go okay I know what this did now let's see what this does and see if that works and stuff like that it's just a lot of fun man it's really really good but yeah that'll do it let me know what you think of my choices um, I'm sure there's a few out there that disagree um, I know a lot I know two of these from the same game but it just goes to show how well made Resident Evil 7 actually is a couple of honorable mentions in the puzzle department of uh, Resident Evil, we have the Ashford family tree part of Curve Veronica, which is where the portraits, you have to kind of match the portraits to the descriptions in the right order to unlock a gun, I believe it was. Um, there's the clock tower from original three, and I want to say, this is not from a puzzle difficulty standpoint, but this is more of a, it's a laugh to do the first time through, it's the light beam puzzle in five. Doing that with a friend the first time through is hilarious, and honestly that whole game with playing with a player or someone you know is hilarious, but that puzzle just brings back some memories, so I'll probably throw those three in there as well. But um, let me know what your favourite is, I'm always interested to know. Or are these three one of, or all of them? <laughs> just let me know. But uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.